So far in our course, we've been trying to develop new integration methods. So what I'm going to show you in, in this video, part one and part two, which is going to come up later, is another category of integrals that have a particular method that is useful for solving them. And in particular, what we want to look at is integrands that are so-called rational functions. And what I mean by a rational function is something where it is a polynomial on the top and a polynomial on the bottom. So this is an example of a rational fall of a rational function is a polynomial one on the top and the polynomial x squared plus two x minus eight on the bottom. And it turns out that there's a couple different algebraic tricks that I can do to manipulate it. I don't immediately see a substitution that is obvious to me. So I need to come up with some sort of algebraic trick that can make this worthwhile. So one algebraic trick that we can do is completing the square. And the way this works is that I'm going to take my x squared plus 2x and I leave a little gap here and write my minus 8. And the method of completing the square is I take the 2 that I have, this coefficient of the linear term of the x term, I divide it by 2 so it becomes 1, and then I square it and the square of 1 is 1. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding that result and I'm going to be subtracting off that result. And the reason that I can do this is now if I go and, and look what I have over here is it is something that I can neatly factor. I can say that this is going to be x plus 1 all squared minus 9. So the reason why I might like this is that if, if I'm going to go back to my original integral now, the x squared plus 2x minus 8 dx, I can rewrite this as the integral of 1 over x plus 1 squared minus 9 dx. And the question is, well, have I helped myself? Is this more useful? And I think it is, because this is a form that is amenable to in some form of trig substitution too. Uh, it, indeed, it looks like something squared minus something else squared, a constant squared, so I need to do a trig sub. Uh, I want all of this x plus 1 to be the thing that's squared. So I'm going to set my x plus 1 to be equal to 3 secant squared of theta. And so this is going to be a trig sub. Now, we could carry on. We could do this methodology. And we could continue in that vein. We could get the answer to this problem that way. So completing the square is this little algebraic trickery that I'm able to do to help turn this category of problem into a trig sub problem. However, this method is limited, good though it is, because if I stop having a nice quadratic on the bottom, maybe it's a cubic or a quartic or a quintic, if I start having interesting things occurring on the top as well, this cute little bit of algebra that works very nicely for quadratics doesn't cleanly extend. So my, my algebra isn't going to always work out so nice. I can't always take these rational functions and just transform them into easy trug substitutions. So I'm going to show you a different piece of algebra that we can do instead. So this is the, the method of partial fractions. So the first step of this technique is to factor the denominator in the usual way. So I'm going to take my x squared plus 2x minus 8. And I'm going to rewrite this as I need to multiply to minus 8 and I need to add to 2. So I'm going to have x plus 4, x minus 2. So I can do a little bit of factoring. Now, I'm still not helped. I, if I have that as the integrand, I still don't know what u to do or how to deal with this. But here's what I'm going to aim to do. I'm going to say, can I make this equal? I'm going to put a question mark to some number divided by the first of these factors plus some other number divided out by the second of these two factors. So that's going to be my algebra. I want to see whether or not it's the case that I, that I can do this manipulation and I can find an A and I can find a B such that this is the case. Now, anticipating what's going to happen, the reason why I like this, the reason why I'm hoping this is the case is A over X plus 4 I can do that. That's just a u substitution. It's going to be a, a 1 over a u. The integral is going to be a ln. Same thing, b over x minus 2. Anytime I have these little linear things on the denominator, I can integrate those. 
So the right hand side, I know how to integrate and we'll see exactly how to do it in a little bit. So if I can find the A and the B, then it's just a matter of going through the rigmarole of doing the integration. So my technique here is I'm going to multiply. I'm deciding to go Christmas colors today. I don't know why. I'm just feeling sad that it's January, I suppose. Multiply by x plus 4, x minus 2. And what that's going to give me is 1 is equal to a. OK, there's already an x plus 4. So if I multiply by both of them, this is going to be a times x minus 2 plus b, if I multiply by both of them, the x minus 2s are going to cancel. I'll be left with an x plus 4. I'm also going to expand what I have out. This is going to be ax minus 2a plus bx plus 4b. And you know what? I'm going to clean it up one more time as well. I'm going to write it as a plus b all multiplied by x and then plus 4b minus 2a. Now, what I want to, to note at this stage is that this equation that I have, 1 equals a plus bx plus 4b minus 2a, is, is sort of two equations. Because I can vary my, my number x as much as I wish. In fact, since x can be anything, but on the left-hand side, it, it has to be fixed. There's only, if you wish, you can think of the left-hand side as 0 times x plus 1. The coefficient in front of the x has to be equal to 0. In other words, I can break this single equation up into two. One says that a plus b has to equal to 0. And then the other one is going to tell me that 4b minus 2a has to equal the value of 1. So that's this one that I'm looking at right there. That one has to be equal to what I have over there. So when you have variables in equations, the single equation can be broken up this way into multiple different equations. Working with the top one, I can say that a is equal to minus b. And if I take that one and fire it back down here, this is going to be, so a is equal to minus b. So 4b plus 2b is equal to 1. So in other words, 6b is equal to 1. And so b is equal to 1 sixth. And if I have that, if I know that my b is 1 sixth, then a is just equal to minus 1 sixth in that case. Okay, so, so where are we at our algebra? We, we started with this messy denominator we didn't know how to do. We factored it, and then we made the guess, can I try to write this in this new form that has an a and a b? And by attempting to do that, I multiplied it both sides by the denominator, I set up some equations, I did some algebra, I got these coefficients. I got that the a was minus 1 6, and that the b was equal to 1 6. So, now let's try to integrate. So we figured out how to deal with this integrand. So let's wrap it in the integral signs. We decided that this was going to be minus 1 6. That was the a. And then underneath the a was an x plus 4. And then also there was a 1 6 for the b. And it was an x minus 2. And all of this dx. For the left expression, I'm going to set my u is equal to x plus 4. My du is therefore just equal to dx. For the right expression, I have used the other variable, how about v? I'll call it x minus 2, and then dv is going to be equal to just dx. So the, the, the first sum is just minus 1 6 over u, and therefore is going to be equal to minus 1 6, the ln of whatever the u is, the ln of x plus 4. And the second one is going to be 1 6 1 over v, so it's going to be ln absolute value of v, and so ln of x minus 2 plus c. So there we have it. We've managed to convert this messy rational function that was 1 over some polynomial. We've written it in this convenient way just by doing algebra that has made it a lot easier to deal with. A couple other cases that are important. In the situation we had, the when we did our factoring of the denominator, we had two different roots. One, we had this x plus 4 factor and this x minus 2 factor. But sometimes you can have something along the lines of, say, 1 over x minus 4, but it's, it's repeated. It's to the power of 3 that when you do your factoring, that's the factoring. It's three factors. So there's a special trick that we have to do in this case. It's a divided by one of the factors, just as you would anticipate, just as we did before. 
And then I've got another factor of x minus 4. But, but what I have to do now is I have to square it. And likewise, for the third one, the x minus 4, I have to put it to the power of 3. This is just going to ensure that the algebra works out nicely. So if you have n factors on the bottom, you need to have n terms, the powers of which are, are that factor, the x minus 4, but to the power of 1, then 1 to the power of 2, then 1 to the power of 3, and so on down the line. So this is your sort of guess if you're going to have repeated roots. It's also possible we have something called irreducible roots. So it's also possible that you have something called irreducible factors. So uh, what about something like this? 1 over x plus 4, uh, x squared plus 1. Now, in this scenario, I have not written this as the product of all linear terms. We, we have this x squared plus 1, and this is referred to as an irreducible factor. And what I mean by that is I cannot break this x squared plus 1 into the product of two linear factors, at least not over the real numbers. Or another way to say that is, if I want to say x squared plus 1 is equal to 0, I'm asking what are the roots? Well, x squared plus 1 equals 0 is the same thing as x squared equals minus 1. x squared is always positive. How can it equal to minus 1? Well, over the real numbers, it can't. It actually turns out, by the way, that there's something called complex numbers. You might have seen it before. There's an imaginary number i that will satisfy equations like that. But we're not going to worry about that for this course. For this course, we don't have an ability to reduce this over the real numbers. So the trick here, when I try to factor this, is to do the following. For the linear term, for the x plus 4 term, I do exactly what I have always done. I pull out an a over x plus 4. But for this irreducible quadratic term, it's, it's over the x squared plus 1. But what I put up here in the numerator is a linear, a generic, undetermined linear bx plus c. Now, in principle, these can get just kind of messy. Maybe I'm going to have like a x plus 4 squared and then an x minus 1 squared. And let's put that irreducible factor in, x squared plus 1. It can be this really, really long, big mess. But that's okay. Your algebra is going to be long and messy. It's true. But the guess as to what your algebra is is relatively straightforward. You sort of do it term by term. I look, okay, I'm going to do my first one first. Well, that was weird. Uh, x plus 4 squared. Well, this is something which is a repeated case. It's the repeated root case. So this is going to be an a over x plus 4 and a b over x plus 4 squared. That's how I deal with situations that are repeated. Okay, well, moving on, we can go to the next one. Well, oh, look that. It's a repeated thing again. So I'm going to keep on doing my algebra. I need to have a c over x minus 1. I need to have a d over x minus 1 squared because, again, I had some repeated factors. And finally, I have this redu irreducible term over here. So I'm going to have to introduce a linear. a, b, c, d are all taken. So I'm going to call it e, x plus f. And then it's all to be divided out by x squared plus 1. So it would be OK if your denominator was this big mess. You'd have all of these different coefficients you have to figure out, a, b, c, d, e, f, however many there were. You'd have a, a big, long system of equations. There'd be like six different unknowns you're solving for. But it would be doable. It would just be long and messier, much messier than this case that we saw in this video with only two. But doable nonetheless. And the good news is that all of these expressions that we, we have over here are something I can integrate. I know how to integrate x plus 4. 1 over x plus 4 is going to be some long term. I know how to integrate this x plus 4 squared. Same thing, we're going to set u equals x plus 4. I know how to integrate this weird e x plus f term because I can set u equals the x squared plus 1 and then a, a du is going to appear of an x. And I've, I've got a linear term on the top. So all of these, it takes a little while, I would be able to do.